Can you guess what we're making today? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. I'm so excited for you to be here today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make my boho baskets. These baskets are so much fun to make and there's so much use for them. I made sure that they were wide enough, big enough, for you to really utilize however you wanted to use. These are great to use at home to put a pot in of a plant. You can use it in a child's room to put toys inside and keep things organized. I utilize these baskets to put yarn balls in. <laughs> it's just a really cute way to stay organized. And I think you're gonna love the pattern as well. Now this basket does have a tendency to be a bit flimsy. It, it can, it's not a fully structured item. Though, however, if you can prop it up, it stands up all by itself with nothing inside. These are completely empty. So if you just, you uh, just kind of mold the stitches on the inside, they stand up. See, it does. And then when you put stuff inside, it really holds structure and you're going to see that. So it's also great for storage capability that way. And also if you need to wash it, if you get it dirty for whatever reason, whatever you put inside, maybe you put a plant and then there's a bunch of dirt inside of it, or you have kids playing and they get something sticky inside, <laughs> which happens, then you can just throw this thing in the washing machine. And I wouldn't put it in the dryer. I'd let it air dry just so it can hold structure and not continue to get flimsy. I also would not recommend putting or using a starch or a yarn stiffener. I think that this basket weighs a little too much for it to actually work, though you can give it a try if you want to. According to instructions on levels, how to define levels of crochet. Uh, this basket utilizes the back post double crochet stitch and front post double crochet stitch. That's where the beautiful pattern comes from. Now they do classify that stitch as an intermediate level, though I don't think that's accurate. I really think that if you're an advanced beginner or this could be defined as an easy pattern, I walk you through it and I try to make it as clear as possible in all my directions. So I am going to label this pattern for advanced beginners, but if you have any difficulty with it, just reach out to me. Let me see if I can help you out, okay? The pattern for this boho basket you can find in both the description section and comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link to purchase the pattern, print it off and be ready to crochet with me. Now there's a couple different options that you have with this particular video. You can follow along with the video because I'm gonna have the instructions on the screen like I always do. So you can make this basket without getting the pattern. Though the pattern is really nice to have in handy with how long it can take you to get from each step to step. Uh, so you don't have to refer back to the video over and over again, which is fine if you want to, but pattern can be helpful in that regard. Or you can get my kit. This is February's kit box. I have a kit available on my website for you to get if you want to get all of the materials. I have the yarn color, so I have five different colors you can choose from. The purple, the green, the blue, the beige, and a gray, which is very neutral, very fun. And I, ha I have all the, those colors in kit form. You can choose if you want the crochet hook in the yarn needle or not. Some people already have those things, they don't need extra. So I have that option for you. And I have the four or the last skein, the skein for the border already divided for you. I did that work for you. We are using two, two yarns at the same time to make this project. And instead of giving you two skeins of the last color, which you barely use any of, I just took one skein and divided it in half. And I show you how to do that in the video so that way you can do it yourself. All right, when you are ready to go, which I hope you are, let's dive into what materials I used to make the boho basket. Okay, so the materials that I used for the boho basket will include four skeins, of the loops and threads impeccable yarn in whatever color that you want to utilize. This is a size four weight worsted medium Aran 10, 12 ply or eight WPI sized yarn. We are going to use approximately 874 yards of the colored yarn or 798 meters 
391 grams or 13.8 ounces of the colored yarn here, all right? Then when it comes to the brim of the basket, we are using Loops and Threads Impeccable, the color Erin. All of my baskets are brimmed with the color Erin. This is also a size four weight worsted medium Erin. 10, 12 ply, 8 WPI sized yarn. You only need one skein of that that we're gonna break in two. We're gonna break it in half. So all you technically need for the brim, the amount of yarn you will need is 203 yards or 185 meters, 91 grams or 3.2 ounces of yarn. So if you are having to utilize a different yarn than what I have here, just keep in mind those amounts of yarn that I used to create this basket. Uh, and also make sure that whatever yarn you're using can can be crocheted really tightly and hold structure. I found that this worked out well for me. Okay, crochet hook. We, I used a K101 slash two or a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. Scissors, yarn needle, tapestry needle to weave in all those ends. And optional are stitch markers. So the reason this is optional is because every row is going to end by slip stitching to close the row or round and then chaining to get to the next round. So it's optional if you want to utilize the stitch markers or not. Though in the brim, I am using continuous rounds. So you may use the stitch markers there where we do continuous rounds. All right, I'm gonna have links to everything you see here in both the description section, comment section below this video. If you wanna get your hands on anything, just click on that link, purchase the item, have it shipped directly to you. Now again, I have everything here located in a kit for February. This is my February kit box. So what will come in the kit is basically the yarn, the crochet hook and the yarn needle. And I will have the Erin yarn divided out for you. So. If you wanna just go ahead and get the kit, feel free to do that as well, and I'll have everything ready for you to go. All right, once you are ready, let's go ahead and dive right into how to make the boho basket. To begin making our post and weave basket, you actually will be working with two strands of yarn at the same time. So taking your dominant color that you want for the bottom of your basket, two strands, <clears throat> bunch them together, create a long enough slip knot for us to weave in these ends at the end of the project. There we go. Attach our crochet hook. Perfect, we're ready to begin. So we start by chaining four. One, two, three, four. Slip stitch into the very first chain to form a ring or a circle. All right, slip stitch, perfect. Chain two, one, two. The chain two does not count as a stitch. It just gets us to round one of our basket. For round one, we're going to double crochet 11 times inside that center of the ring inside the center of the ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Keep them together. 11, perfect. Slip stitch into the very top of the first double crochet. So skip that chain two, ignoring that completely. Find the first double crochet stitch, slip stitch in the top of that stitch to close round one. And this is what you should be looking at right now. Perfect, let's move on to round two. Round two, we will chain two. Again, does not count as a stitch. In each stitch all the way around your circle, in each stitch all the way around your circle, you're going to make two double crochet stitches or increase double crochet in each stitch all the way around. You will end round two with a total of 22 double crochet stitches. One, two, Nine, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Great. Again, skipping the chain two, slip stitch into the top of the very first double crochet stitch to close round two. And there we go. Moving on to round three, chain two, one, two. Again, does not count as a stitch. The repeat pattern for round three will be increase double crochet in the first stitch and then one double crochet in the next stitch and then two, one, two, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round three. You will end round three with a total of 33 double crochet stitches. So here we go. In the very first stitch here, one, two, and then one double crochet in the next stitch. One, two, one, thirty-two, thirty-three. Great. Slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet stitch, and we have finished round three. For round four, we will chain two. One, two, again does not count as a stitch. The repeat pattern for round four will be two double crochets in the first stitch and then one double crochet in the next two stitches. And then two double crochet, one, one. Two double crochet, one, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round four, ending with 44 double crochet stitches. Here we go. One, two, one, one, 43, 44. Great, slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet, close round four. This is what we're looking at. If you need help knowing what round you are on, you can refer to these rings or these circles and it makes it really easy to count by these defining like lines between each round. So this center circle would be round one, two, three, four, and we are now about to start round five. For round five, you will chain two, one, two. Again, does not count as a stitch. The pattern, the repeat pattern for round five will be two double crochets in the first stitch and then one double crochet in the next three stitches. One, one, one. And then two double crochets and then one, one, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round five. You will end round five with a total of 55 double crochet stitches. Here we go. One, two, one, 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 two, Okay, great, let's go ahead and slip stitch into the top of the very first double crochet, close round five, and on to round six. For round six, we will chain two, one, two. The repeat pattern for round six will be two double crochets in the first stitch, and then one double crochet in the next four stitches, and then two double crochet, and then one, two, three, four. Or two double crochet, and then one, 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 one. I'll go through this pattern to start you off. I think you'll find it pretty easy. You will end round six with a total of 66 double crochet stitches. One, two, one, two, three, Four, I lost one, there you go, 
four. Make sure both of those strings make it through. Okay, then 65 and 66. Slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet. Just ended round six. Our circle is growing and growing. We are now going to enter in round seven. Round seven, we will chain two. One, two. Does not count as a stitch. The repeat pattern for round seven will be two double crochets in the first stitch and then one double crochet in the next five stitches. So one, 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 one. <laughs> I, at this point, I just like to count like one, two, three, four, five, and then two double crochets, and then one, two, three, four, five. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round seven. You will end with a total of 77 double crochet stitches. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, 75, 76, 77. Slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet to end round seven. We are now on to round eight. Round eight, we will chain two. One, two. The repeat pattern for round eight will be two double crochets in the first stitch and then one double crochet in the next six stitches and then two double crochet and then one double crochet in the next six stitches. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round eight, ending with a total of 88 double crochet stitches. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then two, 87, 88. Great, slip stitch on the top of the first double crochet to close round eight. For round nine, this is the last increase row for the bottom of the basket. We're going to chain two, one, two. Again, does not count as a double crochet stitch. You, the repeating pattern for round nine will be two double crochets in the first stitch and then one double crochet in the next seven stitches or seven in sign language. And then two double crochet and then one double crochet in the next seven stitches. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round nine, ending round nine with a total of 99 double crochet stitches. Here we go. One, two, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ninety-eight. 99. Great. Slip stitch in the top of the first stitch of round nine. And we have just finished round nine. We have finished our very last round of increases. And now we will start building the side of our basket. For round 10, we will chain two. One, two. Again, does not count as a stitch. The repeat pattern for round 10 will be front post double crochet around the first stitch and then back post double crochet around the second stitch, and then front post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post double crochet, back post double crochet. Repeating this pattern all the way around for round 10, ending round 10 with a total of 99 stitches. We're keeping the same amount of stitches as we had in round nine because we're not increasing anywhere. So front post double crochet, yarn over, Find the first double crochet stitch, come in through the side, 
go behind it and come through the other side. So like you're going right behind the stitch, yarn over, pull that yarn through. So again, like you're flossing a tooth or going behind the stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's a front post double crochet. Now we do a back post double crochet. So yarn over from behind, come in from between those two stitches, push that stitch back and go in through the other side, yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through. So again, you're flossing, but from the other direction, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that is your back post. Then front post double crochet, and back post double crochet. Front post double crochet, and back post double crochet. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round 10. I'll meet you at the end of round 10 to show you how we close the round and move forward. To begin round 11, we will chain two, one, two. That chain two does not count as a stitch, but the chain two is supposed to be coming out of the top of the very first post double crochet. The very first post double crochet that's right next to our chain two is a front post double crochet. For round 11, you want to look at the stitches from round 10 and do the opposite. So if the stitch below was a front post double crochet, then I want to make a back post double crochet around that. Back post. Next stitch is a back post double crochet. So I want to make a front post double crochet around that stitch. Next stitch is a front post double crochet. So I want to make a back post double crochet around that stitch. This will create this basket weave effect where it looks like you're weaving in and out, in and out. Go ahead and continue this pattern. If you see a back post double crochet, you will make a front post double crochet over it. If you see a front post double crochet, you will make a back post double crochet stitch over it. I will meet you at the very end of round 11 to show you how we move forward in this project. Slip stitch into the top of the very first double crochet stitch to close round 11. Perfect. To move on to round 12, we will chain two one, two, you will notice that there is a seam starting where it's very apparent that the post stitches have started and stopped. There's actually a trick that I'm gonna show you where we can cover that up. But before I get to the trick, I just wanted to mention your stitches for this basket need to be on the tight side because we need to start building structure and support for the basket. The tighter the stitches, the easier it will be for those stitches to take form and take shape. All right, this basket will be on the flimsier side, but it will be able to stand straight up if you are able to block out the sides just kind of line up your stitches. They will stand on top of each other. If you put anything inside the basket, like pillows, blankets, toys, whatever you want to put inside the basket, it will hold structure. So it's important for you to make your stitches on the tight side. Okay, for round 12, 
the way we're going to start round 12 to cover up this seam is we're going to be doing sort of a post to tog or post two together looking at the stitch we just slip stitched into it's a back post double crochet stitch to begin this round we know that each stitch we make needs to be the opposite of the stitch underneath so that way it will create this basket weave look okay so if this is a back post double crochet i will need to make a front post double crochet stitch over it so trying to hide this chain two i am going to make the opposite of what i'm about to make to cover up the chain two if i'm about to make a front post then I need to start with a back post double crochet. I'm going to yarn over, find the chain two from the row before. I'm going to back post around that chain two. All right, so I have three loops on my crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through only two loops, leaving two loops on my crochet hook. All right, find that back post double crochet stitch you just slip stitched into, yarn over, front post double crochet around that back post, yarn over, pull through two loops, leaving you with three loops on your crochet hook. The middle loop on your crochet hook is attached to the back post double crochet stitch the front loop on your crochet hook is attached to the front post double crochet stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops, keeping one stitch behind. We want to do this because if, if we were to just back post double crochet stitch around the chain two, it would increase our stitches. It would create a whole other stitch and our basket would start expanding in this spot. So we need to make sure that we make the post stitch around the chain two to cover up the seam, but tie, tie it together with the very first stitch we make. So that way we're left behind with only one stitch opposed to two. That will help us to stay on count. All right. And then you continue the rest of round 12 exactly like we did with round 11. You look at the stitch from the row before you look at the stitch from the round before and you'll make the opposite. So this is a front post, so I'll make a back post around it. Back post double crochet stitch. Next stitch is a back post double crochet stitch. So I will make a front post double crochet stitch around that stitch. Next stitch is a front post double crochet stitch. So I will make a back post double crochet stitch around that Perfect. Go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way around for round 12. I'll meet you at the end of round 12 to show you how we close round 12 off, begin round 13, and at that point you just repeat the process of round 13 over and over and over again until you reach the end of round 27. All right. It's also very important that you count your stitches throughout these rows to make sure you stay with 99 double crochet stitches. We want to stay on count. All right. Keep going. I will see you very soon to show you how to move on. Okay. Last stitch of round 12. Back post double crochet stitch. Perfect. To close round 12, I will look for that front post, back post, two tog stitch, that one stitch that was remaining. I'm going to slip stitch into that stitch. That closes round 12. All right. To begin round 13, chain two, one, two. The very first stitch we're going to make is a back post double crochet, front post, double crochet, two tog. And I say that because looking at the very first stitch here, it's a front post double crochet. So to make the basket weave effect, I will have to make a back post double crochet over that stitch. If I'm about to make a back post double crochet over that stitch, then I need to do the opposite over the chain two. So I will make 
a front post double crochet stitch over the chain two stitch from the row before, from the round before, so we can cover up that seam. All right, so yarn over, find the chain two from the round before. Front post, double crochet around that chain two. Yarn over, pull through only two loops on our crochet hook, leaving two loops behind. Let's come to that front post double crochet stitch that we began round 12 with. Yarn over, back post double crochet around this front post. There we go. Yarn over, pull through two loops on our crochet hook, leaving behind three loops. This middle loop is attached to the front post double crochet that was around the chain two. This loop right here is attached to the back post double crochet stitch that is right here. Yarn over, pull through all three loops, creating a back post double crochet, front post double crochet, two tog or two together. And then we just move on with the rest of round 13, looking at the stitch below and doing the opposite. So if this was a back post double crochet, I will make a front post double crochet. And if this is a front post double crochet, I will make a back post double crochet stitch. Repeating the pattern all the way around for round 13. When you come to the end of round 13, you will just slip stitch into this stitch that is above the back post double crochet, front post double crochet, two tog. For round 14, you'll do a front post, back post, two tog. And then in round 15, you'll do a back post, front post, two tog. And then just repeat back and forth until you reach the end of round 27. I will meet you at the end of round 27 to show you how we move on with our basket. All right, just real quick, ending round 13 right here. Okay, slip stitching into that top. This was the back post, front post, two tog stitch. So here is the chain two. Remember, we're not putting anything in the chain two top of that stitch and that's where we will slip stitch to move on to the next and then you just chain two again for round 14 it would be a front post back post two tog and then round 15 would be back post front post two tog and again I will see you at the end of round 27 you got this I know you do I hope you're having fun I'll see you soon All right, so I made it to round 18. I'm actually just about to finish round 18 when I ran out of yarn on one of my skeins and I need to join more yarn to continue working my project. I wanted to pause a second and show you the trick that I use to join yarn to my projects, which I absolutely love. It's my go-to join trick. It's called the invisible knot and I'm gonna show you how to accomplish this if it's a trick that you would like to take on for yourself to continue on with your project. So grabbing a brand new skein of yarn, we're gonna have the new skein that we want to join to the project. I'm gonna lay it going this direction. I'm gonna take the yarn that is already attached to my project and I'm running out of. I'm gonna lay it right next to the new skein, but I'm gonna lay it going in the opposite direction. You're going to butt those up against each other. Take these two strings, take two fingers, wrap the two strings around your two fingers. See the little tail come over? You wanna take that tail, go over the two strings between your fingers. So the tail pokes out towards your fingernail. Grab the tail remove your two fingers, gently pull, and it creates a knot right there. Perfect. Okay, let's take our hand, run it along the two strings to the other side. Two fingers, wrap both strings around your two fingers. 
take the little tail, go over the two yarns, the two strings, between your fingers, and have it poke towards your fingernail. Grab the tail, remove your fingers, pull, and it creates a knot on this side. So now you should have two knots. Grab this yarn, grab this yarn, pull, and the two knots will start to come in towards each other. And now they form a very strong join that is not coming undone. Grab your scissors, and you can actually cut these little tails really close to that knot, and that knot is not gonna come undone. I've used this invisible knot trick for every one of my projects, and in which case, they've never, ever come undone. I've never had any problems with this trick. It's my favorite go-to, super strong. And now, when you continue working your project, you can crochet right over the join, right over the knot, and it camouflages in with your project, and you have nothing to come back and weave in, nothing to address after the project. You're done. It's amazing. It's an incredible trick. Called the Invisible Knot. If you would like to use it, you're more than welcome to. If you have your own technique, your own trick that you like to use to join yarn together, go ahead and use that, whatever works best for you. I just wanted to provide you with a little trick that I think is amazing just in case you needed it. All right, we are so close to being done. Continue working on with our basket. I will see you very soon. Oh, just finishing round 27 of our basket. Slip stitch into the top stitch here. Great, all done with round 27. We have just finished the last round of needing to do the front post double crochet, back post double crochet stitch. This part is done. So let's go ahead and grab our scissors. Cut a long enough tail for us to weave in the ends. Okay, taking both of these strings, yarn over, pull through the loop on your crochet hook, pull tight, for a slip knot, and we've just closed off this color. We are now going to grab color number two. Let's go ahead and move this basket out of the way so we can prep color number two before we start working on the basket itself. Grabbing color number two. You have a full skein, but really we need to divide the skein into two balls to work with. We will use exactly this whole skein to finish off the basket, but instead of providing you with two whole skeins that we only use half of for each of them, it's just smartest if we use one skein and break it in half. We are going to roll this ball into two individual balls that are going to be approximately three and a half inches in diameter. They will both be approximately 2.2 or 2.3 ounces each. They both should have approximately 142 yards of yarn in each ball, okay? So if you have a scale handy that is super awesome or just a measuring tape will work great as well. I like to pull from the center of the skein, but if you like to pull from the outside of the skein, you are welcome to start wherever you would like. There we go, where's the end? Once you have finally found the end of your yarn, I begin by taking two fingers and just rolling the yarn around my two fingers, building it up building and then after a while I will remove my fingers pinching it so it doesn't come undone I will take the yarn and I'll start wrapping it the other direction and I'll kind of elongate as much as I can to create as much surface area as possible 
Great building, building. And then I'll stop and I'll rotate it diagonally and I'll start going in between these two sides. So I'll go like right there in, be in between. Build it that way. And then stop and I'll rotate and I'll start building in the other two in-betweens. So right there. Now that's just how I do it. If you have another way of rolling your ball or if you have a yarn ball roller, that's pretty awesome as well and just keep rolling. It's best though, if you roll from your fingers right here, that is how I measured it out anyway, but as long as you can get to as close to equal sides, <clears throat> size balls as possible, that is the goal. All right, we have our two individual balls, taking that one skein and breaking it in half. I actually just measured each one of these and they came out to exactly 2.4 ounces each. And taking my measuring tape, it's actually, depending on where you grab from, it's either 3.5 or four inches in diameter. So it's going to be right right in there, 3.5 or, or four, some, just, just right in there. Either way, you'll know you completely broke down the entire skein as close as possible, the best you can do. All right, now that we have our two balls, we are going to be working two strands of yarn at the same time, again, just like we did with our dark gray color. Let's bring back our basket. All right, here's our basket, laying it flat. Here's our crochet hook. Here is where we just tied off our dark gray color. Taking the two cream color strands of yarn and move them off to the side. Great. Long enough tail for us to weave in our ends. Create our slip knot. Attach our crochet hook. And we are ready to begin. So I'm going to slip stitch into the very same stitch that we slip stitched to close round 27. This tail here helps us to identify where the basket began and ended each round. And that helps us to know that's a good place to start. So making a slip stitch in that same stitch. This just attaches the new color of yarn to the project. To actually begin our new round, we are now going to be on round 28. We want to chain one single crochet in the same stitch that we just slip stitched into. Perfect. And for the rest of round 28, we are just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. Go ahead and continue working round 28. I will meet you at the end of round 28 to show you how we move on to round 29. You should end round 28 with a total of 99 single crochet stitches. So that was one, two, three, 98, 99, great! We've made it all the way around for round 28, for round 29 and round 30. We are going to be working in continuous rounds. That means I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna look for the very first single crochet stitch and I am going to just put my very first single crochet stitch on top of that, creating a continuous round. We are not slip stitching and chaining one. This will just help us to create a seamless connection leading us on to the next round. So for round 29 and round 30, you are continuing to make one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. 
You can look at the inside of the basket to see where our tails are to identify the changeover of the new row. I will meet you at the end of round 30 to show you what we do different for round 31. Again, you will continue to have 99 single crochet stitches in each round. All right, coming up on the end of round 30, looking here. So we have one, two, three, four stitches to go. One, two, three, four. Perfect. I am now about to enter on round 31. If using a row marker helps you to identify exactly where that breakdown of each round is, go for it. Use a round marker. Anything that is helpful, go for it. All right, so working on round 31, we're going to single crochet in the first 17 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, 15, 16, 17. Great. All right, now we're going to chain 15 chains. One, two, 14, 15. We're going to skip 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We're going to single crochet in the 16th stitch here. Single crochet. Great. What we have just made is our first handle. Great. Okay, so now we're going to single crochet into the next 34 stitches. So including this would make it 35. So one, two, three, four, 34, 35, great. Okay, now we're going to make handle number two. So chain 15, one, two, 14, 15. Skip 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, single crochet into the 16th stitch. Perfect. All right, rotate this a little bit more. All right, and you're just going to single crochet in each of the last 16 stitches. So including this stitch will be a total of 17. One, two, three, 15, 16, 17. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if I lined up with my row marker. Ah, oh, boom, right there. We are in line for the end of round 31. We are now about to begin round 32. For round 32, through the end of round 38, we're just making one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Let me go ahead and get to that first handle so I can show you how we work the handle after we've made a chain and then I feel confident that you're able to complete the rest of the rows before we make the last, last little bit. All right, we are coming upon the handle. We know that there are 15 chains in our handle and we need to make sure that there are a total of 15 stitches over this handle so we can keep the count 99 stitches what we want it to be. So we need to make 15 single crochet stitches around the handle. So how I do this is I'll insert my crochet hook around the handle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through for my single crochet stitch. So there's one, two, three, 15. Great. So that's the way it looks right there. And then you just continue on making your first single crochet back right there. So 
one single crochet in each stitch all the way around the basket. You will work the next handle the same way we just worked this handle. I will meet you at the end of round 38 to show you the last step of the basket, but I think you're good. Go ahead and continue making one single crochet in each stitch around. I'll see you very soon. Once you have reached the end of round 38, slip stitch into the next stitch just to create a very smooth transition of the end of the row to the beginning of the row. It just helps make it look less jarring to end the row. So if I were to just not do that, you can see how it's a more jarring row. Slip stitch into the next stitch just to create a very smooth transition. Great. The very last thing we're going to do for this bag before it is complete is make a really unique looking handle. So we're going to take this bulky part of the bag, the cream part, we're going to look on the inside of the bag. So rotate the bag so you're looking on the inside. All right, so take this. It's best to look at the handle. You want to identify where round 31 was. So if this was round 28, then 29, 30, 31, round 31 would align with where the handle began. We're going to take this and fold it so it's in line with round 31, okay? So we are folding inward towards the inside of the bag. For this join, we're going to slip stitch to join this together. Go ahead and chain one. Insert your crochet hook back into that same stitch you just slip stitched into. Find round 31, so 28, 29, 30, 31. Lining this up. Insert your crochet hook into the aligning stitch. So it's coming out the bottom. Making sure all this is folded. Just to help you out. All right, you're going to pop your crochet hook out the next stitch up, that is how we're going to grab our yarn, yarn over, pull the yarn through that stitch and all the way through. So I have everything through now and slip stitch through the loop that's already on your crochet hook, leaving you with just the one loop. Okay, next stitch over, insert there. Find the aligning stitch from round 31, poke it all the way through. All right, find the stitch up from the one we just poked into. That is how we're going to yarn over. Pull that yarn all the way through and pull through the loop on your crochet hook for a slip stitch. Let's do that again. Next stitch over, right here, okay? Align with round 31. If you're not sure which round is 31, find where your yarn is coming out of, and it's coming out of these rounds right here. So I know that round 31 would be the round right below that. Pop out the stitch right above it. Yarn over, pull through all the way and slip stitch. Next stitch, pop through, round 31. Come through the stitch on the top, yarn over, pull through, pull through. Great. What this is going to do is create a really cool bunching effect on the very top which I will show you when we're all done and made our way all the way around the basket, what that is supposed to look like. But for now, what I want you to do is I want you to at least get to the first handle. Let's get to the first handle. I will work the stitches around the handle with you just to make sure that you are comfortable before I let you go to finish the rest of the basket.
great right before the handle here making one more stitch all right perfect okay so we've gotten to the handle here's what we're going to do insert our crochet hook into the next stitch come through insert your crochet hook through but this time we're going to grab through the handle pull through all the way through next stitch insert crochet hook come through the aligning stitch row 30 from round 31 yarn over pull all the way through all the way through next stitch a joining stitch for round 31 we're in the handle now yarn over all the way through slip stitch that's it pretty easy right actually that handle provides extra help for you it's easier working the handles perfect we'll get through the handle or let's get past the handle and then make our way back to the center of the bag work a couple of those stitches and then i'll let you go where i will meet you at the end of the project I've made my way all the way around the basket, grabbing our scissors, cutting a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends. Yarn over, pull through the loops on our crochet hook, pull tight for a slip knot, and we have just tied off our bag. The only thing we have left to do is weave in our ends. We're gonna weave these in, we're going to weave these in, and optional, but if you want to, the very center of our bag where we started, you can weave these in as well. This is how I weave in my ends. Everybody does it a little bit different. If you have a way you prefer, go for it. But I'm gonna show you how I will weave in my ends. Thread your yarn needle. Great. You want to keep color to color, so I'm going to keep cream with cream, and when I weave in the dark gray, I will weave it into the dark gray section just to make sure you don't have anything sticking out like a sore thumb. All right. Coming through. I like to take my yarn needle and I will go through the yarn. I won't weave in and out, in and out. I'm actually going to go right in the middle of the yarn, between the fibers, that way my yarn will get stuck, the fibers will cling to each other, and create a much better hold. Perfect. Okay, so I go one direction. And I'll go a little bit further. Go. I got enough of a tail, I can do it. And there we go. And then the trick that I really like that really helps to secure the yarn is once I go one direction, I will then go back upon what I just wove and that really seals it in. So I'm going to go actually over where I came out and then start going backwards. Again, in between fibers, in between yarns. go and a little bit further great and that's it grab my scissors cut that off and I've just woven my first tail then I'll go and I'll weave this tail and everything else and then the basket is done it's complete and you'll be left with let me show you that really cool ridge which you probably already see yourself the ridge of your basket this makes the basket very different it's a defining piece so you can either choose to fold it flat and have it look like that and it's a stronger handle or you can kind of pop it a little bit squeeze the sides and make it more rounded and it will have a more rounded 3D effect going on, which looks really, ah, 
really cool. You can definitely see it from your own basket if you, it's difficult for you to see off of my basket because of the lighting. But it creates a very cool little bubble. So again, either go flat or press the middle of it and it'll round out. And that is your basket. Alright, so what did you think of the boho basket? I hope you had fun. I hope you absolutely love it. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the process, the pattern, what you think of the flimsiness of the bag, or how you plan on using it. Oh, I can't wait to hear what you say. So yes, just mention in the comment section below. If you do have a question about anything in the process, feel free to ask in the comment section below. If you see that somebody asked a question and I haven't had an opportunity to respond to them yet, but you know the answer, feel free to help them out to help them get through their crochet project and make their crochet experience that much better. And then when I get a chance to come back through and I can see your response, I can say, yep, that's exactly how I would have answered it. Or I would have probably done it this way, but that's still a good option but I love that we are a community and we help each other out. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up button. Subscribe to my channel, that way you don't miss upcoming videos that I have coming out. Check out my membership program, see if you'd like to join. I have a couple different levels. I'd love for you to be a part of it. If you like this video, you might also love these videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day, guys, and I will see you with my next video. Bye.